So I am going to go ahead and get started with sharing uh, some of the stuff that we have going on over the last week. Um, so first thing I wanted to share, uh, there, I, I think that we had discussed this, maybe Johan uh, mentioned it already, but Patch My PC had a PS App Deploy Toolkit uh, 101 webinar earlier today. Uh, I believe if you missed it that you can still sign up and at least get a recording. Um, so would recommend doing that if this is something that you are interested in. Uh, PSADT, of course, is a very popular uh, app deployment solution uh, uh, wrapper for PowerShell, or using PowerShell, rather. Uh, as part of that webinar, um, or at least during the webinar, a new version of uh, PSADT was released that had a number of uh, improvements and functionality changes uh, under the hood. <clears throat> um, so this is version 3.10. Uh, would recommend going out and grabbing that new one. Um, if you are using this in your organization, it is a whole uh, bunch of improvements and, and changes and fixes. So great stuff there to the uh, PSADT team. Um, our friend Ben Whitmore uh, released, so he has been maintaining a, a popular tool uh, for a while, the Win32 app migration tool. This is a PowerShell based tool that will help you um, or can help you migrate your config manager applications over to Intune uh, with a little bit of automation. Um, so Ben's had version two of the tool in beta for a few months now and just released a new beta version um, uh, over the weekend. Uh, most of the updates, um, uh, most of this were improvements and bug fixes. Most of these updates were surrounding detection methods. Um, so I wanted to point that out as well if you are using this tool. Uh, a couple of other interesting things that weren't necessarily updates to uh, solutions. <clears throat> uh, Damien wrote a blog post on automatically being notified by mail or Teams when local admin accounts have been created on Intune devices. So I thought this was a pretty cool solution, uh, a remediation script, as well as um, sending information up to log analytics for any time a new uh, local admin account was created or added on our Intune devices. So this is another solution that will allow us to give a little, get a little bit more visibility into um, our Intune devices. I thought this was definitely worthwhile, uh, a worthwhile share as Damien's solutions often are. Um, I saw a pretty interesting update, uh, what I thought was interesting, from Microsoft. Uh, so this is an improvement to a feature that we have in Intune. Uh, the ability to, we've had the ability to expedite security updates outside of our standard uh, update rings if we're using Windows Update for Business and Intune uh, to update our devices. And Microsoft is rolling out the ability to expand this, uh, this feature so that we can expedite non-security updates as well. Um, it's expected that this is going to be available broadly uh, by April 1st, which I believe is Monday. Um, <clears throat> and what's, what's pretty cool about this is you'll see that if you've not seen this feature before, Essentially, in this policy, you can go in and choose a security update, or uh, which are referred to as B releases. You can see here in the screenshot. Um, you can choose a security update and push this out to devices so that if we have a, um, a critical security release, something that needs to be patched quickly, we can do that with this feature. Um, so you go in here, you target that that B release, um, assign it to the list of devices that you need updated sooner rather than later. Um, and they're going to uh, download, install that update, and then reboot um, either in zero, one, or two days is what you can specify in that policy. Uh, so the new addition to this policy is the ability to add these D releases you can see here. Um, and those are the non-security updates that come through at the end of the month. 
so this is a, a nice improvement. I think adds a little bit of flexibility to our uh, update processes and procedures in Intu. Now, um, unfortunately, I have not had a moment to sit down and watch these yet, uh, but uh, obviously going to be on my agenda here. But Microsoft has been putting on the Windows Server Summit uh, for the last couple of days. I believe tomorrow is the last day. Yes, it is. Um, so uh, this is a, a number of sessions on various topics, a couple of examples here, um, Microsoft options for VMware migration, that one stuck out to me, what's new in Windows Server 2025. Um, uh, there's a session surrounding the next version of Active Directory, which we've talked about a little bit here on office hours, and a number of other things that are coming down the, the pipeline for um, Windows Server. Uh, so. For those of you managing servers out there, definitely recommend checking this out and seeing what sessions they have available. Um, we've found a lot of value in these uh, these uh, events, um, <clears throat> and I expect uh, the exact same out of this one. So I'll be checking that out myself over the next few days. And last but not least, um, though, if you have spent any time on Twitter uh, over the last week, um, uh, you may have seen some uh, conversation about this already. Um, some in, an important topic, I think, around autopilot and uh, a potential um, uh, security issues, or rather how we can secure autopilot a little bit more. Um, and I'm not going to get into the, the whole topic here because it's still been an ongoing conversation over the last week on Twitter. Um, but our friend Morris over on uh, MS Endpoint Manager uh, wrote, um, and Sandy, I'm sorry, uh, Morris and Sandy both uh, collaborated on this blog post, um, wrote a blog post sort of uh, about what autopilot is um, and how at a basic level it works and we're able to use um, autopilot both to register our devices as well as we can skip the registration process and inject an autopilot profile into a device so that the device gets enrolled into um, a tenant. And that's really what the conversation has been surrounding for the last week. Um, so, I'm not going to just uh, go through all of the details of the blog post here. I really encourage you, if you're using Autopilot in your organization, to go and read the details of this post. Um, but there are some things in here after stepping through the process that talk about how we might be able to secure this process a little bit more uh, through conditional access policies uh, and that sort of thing. Very important with the things that we do, especially with our internet-based services and our shared services. Um, from my perspective, as we see um, more of a flattening of our uh, directory structures and our in and our systems management structures than we had previously, um, these things are becoming increasingly important to secure. Um, I wish Johan was here to talk through this, uh, have a good conversation about this with me, but perhaps we can spend a few moments on it next week. Uh, in the meantime, I recommend um, going and reading this blog post. It's a fantastic read. Um, so put that on your list. <laughs> 